A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Sometimes a photo makes you stop in your tracks and just want to look at it. But what is that? Is it perfect exposure, perfect composition, just a beautiful scene? Sometimes I can go past a photo again and again every day, but then start to love it and it really means something special to me. So today I'm really excited because this is a topic that I'm very passionate about and that's emotion in landscape photography. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So as you can see, I'm out in my garden. We have got what could be the hottest day of the year today. And I just thought, I can't sit inside on a day like this. So I've come out and got my prints out here and I'm gonna chat about this. So I was listening to the radio um, on the way to a shoot the other day and it was a song called It's All About You. And it was a, a lady who was a nurse um, who recorded this and I think it gone a bit viral on the internet and it was being played on the radio and it made me cry. And I think a lot of people texted in saying the same thing, it made them cry. And if you're anything like me, then music evokes emotion. When, it, when you listen to a music, maybe you relate to something back in time and, and it really evokes emotion, there's no doubt about it. But one thing um, that's a little bit more difficult to connect is how landscapes and landscape photography can evoke emotion. We know that if you have a powerful photo by a photojournalist of a, a war photo or maybe a sports photo, photo, then that can evoke emotion. But how does landscape photography evoke emotion? And how do you produce images in landscape photography that evokes emotion? Now this interesting topic was something that I was speaking about recently in my workshop in Lofoten and we were talking about this in one of the workshop sessions we had in, inside. We were looking at some photos and trying to discuss how they made you feel and um, how photos can evoke emotion. So I wanted to talk about that in a little bit more detail. So first of all, let me just think, talk about what landscape photography means to me in terms of going out and taking the photo. And I think this is something that's probably different for everybody. For me, it's quite a solitary thing. I like to be out in the landscape on my own, hiking and just taking in the beauty of nature really. And it's something I've done since I was 13, 14 years old, hiking in the Lake District. And it's what I, it's why I originally got into landscape photography. And, you know, I can look back at photos that I've taken and, and um, you know, tell a story about them. And I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit more detail. And certainly when I look back at these photos, they definitely evoke emotion in me. But what I wanna talk about is how these photos evoke emotion in somebody else that might not know the backstory to them. Because I think that's what's, that's what's really important. But to get there, I think you've, and I'll talk about this in a little bit more detail, but to actually take these photos that do have something a little bit more, that X factor, I suppose, then I think you've got to invest time in locations, you've got to understand that location, and you've got to be in the right sort of space when you take that photo, because I definitely think that the feelings that you have when you take that photo, and the time you invest in taking that photo, is actually reflected in the emotion in the photo that you take. So there's two types of emotion, as I spoke about. There's one which is the emotion that the, the photograph gives the photographer. So if I take an, uh, a photo here, for instance, then this one's a probably a good example. Then, you know, this is a photo um, from Sky. It was from a workshop in Sky, and we'd spent a couple of hours searching for a, a, a composition. We eventually found this green stone here. And, you know, this photograph to me when I look at it, it just makes me think about the hunt for this stone. Um, you know, it makes me think about the day it was, it was quite an overcast day, but I was like quite happy when I found this stone. So it sort of gives me quite a happy feeling this. But if I ask people what they thought, you know, this is not one of my best ever photos. This is, this, this is a good photo. You know, it, it's probably an eight or a nine out of 10, but it's not what I call a 10 out of 10. But people will think different things. Um, and I actually recently, did a survey of about 10,000 people where I sent an email out 
to ask them what they thought on a series of photos. I'm going to share those results with you and, and how their emotion was evoked when they looked at that photo and what type of emotion they had. And it's really interesting. But what's really, really interesting is when you title a photo, how they think about that photo as well. And I'll discuss that later in the video. So yeah, I, I, I have a certain feeling for this photo, you know, and a story that sort of goes with it. But as I said, other people will have different emotions, but how do they come by those emotions? What is it in a photo that actually creates that emotion? So before I get into what actually cr creates and evokes this emotional experience when you look at a photo, it's, it's worth actually looking at the media that you look at those photos on. I've got prints in front of me, but most of us will go onto our phone, we'll, we'll get onto Instagram and we'll scroll up Instagram and we'll have a connection with photos as we scroll through the feed. But I think there's a difference between how, how you feel about a photo on Instagram, which I think is just initial impact of a photo, and how you actually think of a photo when you look at it, invest time, look at it. So, you know, if, 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 you know, if, if, I, if this is on Instagram, it might have some initial impact, but when you spend time in a print, looking at it, looking at the details, seeing that there's mist here, this road's going here, there's different types of trees, there's maybe a house just hidden behind these trees here you start to build a different story in your mind and then connect different emotions with this image. So, so which media you're looking at the photos in is gonna make a big difference to the type of emotion that, that you feel when you look at that, those photos. So if you take this image here from um, an image that I posted on Instagram when I was skiing, you know, that, that image has got um, instant impact it did really well it's like one of the top 10 photos that i posted on instagram but it would never be a, a photo that i would sell i don't really feel like it evokes emotion now th there are probably certain emotions that people think about when they look at this photo but i don't think it's got longevity i don't think that when you look at it and live with it for a long time you're going to get a lot from that photo it's very sort of one dimensional you know there's that it's just these lines going to the mountains in the background there's nothing more about this image really than some interesting pattern but it did really well on instagram you know it got lots of likes but you know, what really do likes mean? They're just, they're, they're just somebody's instant reaction to that photo. I don't really think they're telling you much about the emotion that, that that photo evokes. But what you post that photo on is going to have a different impact on your viewers. So if you hang something in a, in a, in a gallery, to be in an advert, to be in on Instagram, to be in on your website front page, it's gonna be, you know, it's, it's gonna evoke different things in, in people. So there's been a lot of neurological research done that shows that art is perceived differently than when you're just looking at an object. And brain regions that are actually involved in emotion and goal setting and things like that are invoked by art. So how is that the case and how can we actually produce images that are going to evoke more emotion within people and evoke the right emotions as well? You know, maybe you want people to feel happy or sad or reflect reflect when they look at a, a, a particular image of yours. There's a great quote from Ansel Adams which says, a true photograph need not be explained nor can be contained in words. And I feel that that's just a great way of showing the difference between photography and words. And it's something that's resonated massively with me as being dyslexic because you know, I, I've always struggled with words. I've struggled with understanding how to express myself with words, but I've never struggled that much with expressing myself with photos or connecting with photos in, in a really strong way. So it comes down to be about be connecting with the viewer and having that sort of resonance with the viewer, which then evokes a mood. So it's not, it's not trying to um, create an emotion in the viewer to begin with. It's just about creating that connection with, with, with the viewer. So interestingly, I did this um, little bit of research where I sent out five images. 5,000 people got the image with no title and 5,000 people got the image with a title. Um, and I'll, again, I'll explain what the results were with a title, um, but just to look at the ones without a title first. So this image here of sky was an interesting one and, and I, I gave somebody some multiple choices of emotions that they might feel when they look at this image and also they could say other. Um, and what was really interesting is if you just look at these results, you can see that they're, that they're 
they're quite different. You know, people think different things when they think about this particular image. Some people think calm, some people think curious. There's a lot of amazement, energetic and awe. But there's a lot of people that are thinking different things, different emotions. It means that this image has definitely um, connected with people. Most people that looked at this image did choose one of these rather than an image that I'll show you later where people just actually in the comments said it doesn't really evoke a lot of emotion. Um, and then when you look at the actual emotions that people wrote in the comments, then a lot of people wrote fear or um, danger. So things that I hadn't put in there, I thought it was just in incredible, you know, that, that it wasn't an intention for me when I took that photo to evoke fear, but it's definitely captured emotion in that, in, in that photograph. So, so why is that? Let's try and look at it in a little bit more detail. So I think, I think the first thing that, that um, comes across really, really strong when I start to connect emotion with photographs. And I look at the photographs that I like the most, that people probably spend more time looking at. Certainly, you know, if I look at my portfolio image and, and, and the images that people buy the most, which I think probably are the ones that people connect with and then have some emotion to, then they tend to be photos where I've understood the environment. I've understood and waited around to try and capture that environment with a bit of, maybe a bit of mystery, maybe um, not just connecting it, uh, not just getting the sharpest image there or, or having the foreground and the background in focus, but trying to have that sort of extra something else. I often talk about light, time in subject and composition. I think when all those things come together, then you're getting close because if you have timing and light, then, th then that can be good. But it's not just those. You need something super special. And this is a good example, this image here. So if anybody's watched my channel then they'll have seen this image a lot this was one i took in iceland i was in this particular location for a lot of hours with mass peter everson and you know i felt like i knew this location really well i i really love these repeating patterns here but i, I took a lot of photos of this prior to getting this photo that i don't think showed it off really well but this photo when the light just came up there everything just seemed to connect together but there's a little bit of mystery in it. There's a little bit of something that's just left to the imagination. And I feel that this image does leave something to the imagination. It doesn't tell the whole story. So when somebody looks at this, they can maybe start to put some of their imagination in the photo. And again, that's something that I think is really, really important. I think if your photo is just a record shot, it just everything's sharp, everything's in focus, even if it has really good light, that's not necessarily going to evoke emotion, but something that's capture something that's just a little bit mysterious then I think that's going to be something that's really special. In fact Ansel Adams again another quote from Ansel Adams summed it up when he said there's nothing worse than a, a sharp image of a fuzzy concept and I think you know you get a fuzzy concept when you just arrive at a location and you take a shot. Um, it, it, it's one of the things that I have to admit I struggle with when I'm on workshops because when you're on a workshop you go into multiple locations you don't tend to invest seven hours just waiting for the light because realistically people will get bored people want to go and see multiple locations when they go to Iceland or they go to the Faroe Islands and you may get lucky but for me to get these really amazing shots I have to invest my time going back to a location again and again and again and if I look at um, a shot where that that again worked very well um, and just get, dive through my images here then then this I think is a good example of that you know this again is a, a one, one of my best-selling images um, and this is a location I've been to probably 20 times and I just happened to go there when the light was just exactly how I wanted it. The trees just had a little bit of the right colour on them and everything just came together with this and it, 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 it definitely reflected my mood on this day which was just this, this, this feeling of wonderment and just calmness at the same time. I was super excited but super calm at the same time and it just... You know, there's so many elements to this image as well. You know, you look at it for long, you'll see these sheep walking through. You know, the mist in the background just revealing different layers and the colour of this sort of peach colour at the top. Just, I just think, you know, for me, I was really pleased to capture it, but I think 
it, it, it's definitely something that I can see people hanging on the wall and feeling something about when they look at it. And actually there's a great quote from photographer Faye Goodwin which says, I like photographs to leave something to the imagination. So I think that's something that you can think about. You can think, how can I leave something to the imagination with a photograph? You know, if you think about that church photo that I took um, in Iceland, which has just come to my mind now, um, I've had the church in there and then the mountain isn't all in. It leaves something to the imagination. You imagine how big that mountain is because you see this tiny church rather than including the whole church. So there are things to do, that you can do when you're taking your photos to evoke emotion and capture somebody's attention when they're looking at that photo. So, okay, let's extend on that and talk about other ways that you can maybe try and capture something that's gonna, gonna really grab somebody's attention and then evoke some emotion. So I think the first thing, going back to what I said earlier, was you need to go back to a, a location. I've, I feel the best way to do this is find a location that's close by where you are, and it doesn't matter if you don't have mountains, you'll find something, it might be a tree or something, and just go back there and observe it in different conditions. And eventually I think you'll find a way of taking a photo, photograph that's just a little bit different, that's just got some different lighting, some different conditions. Maybe it's just in fog or it's, or it's, it's just in the blue hour of the day and it just looks special. But you'll be able to take something that's, that's maybe a little bit unique and then maybe leave something to the imagination. And I feel that if you go back to somewhere a lot, you're more likely to capture something that's super special. So then looking at some specifics in photos, then one of them is pattern response. So um, we like patterns as humans. Uh, symmetry is important and, and patterns important. They tend to be connected to beauty and they're something that we're more likely to be attracted towards. So having patterns is really important. And if you look at, again, some photos that I feel do this really well, so this one here is, is, is a good example. And there's multiple examples of patterns in this, but it's got other elements in it, but the patterns of the sheep, the patterns of the trees in the background, you know, there's something special about this image. And I feel that this image does evoke emotion in people when they look at it. You know, I've seen people look at this image when I take, take them through my portfolio, which is a good thing to do as well, by the way, print things out and just sit down with people and just show them and see what they think. They're more likely to spend more time on printed images than they are if you show them on a screen. Then, then people have spent more time with this. Again, it's the same with this image here from Scotland, um, which is you know, a pattern-based image. Um, you know, the image of these patterns here. Now, I took this image because I felt these reflected the valleys of Glencoe that I'd just driven through. And this was why I was attracted to this image. And then, you know, rather than just zooming in on the mountains in the background, which maybe, you know, you would do if you didn't have as much time, but um, I had time to look at this, invest time, just, just sitting there and just admiring the beautiful scene. And it's these patterns that attracted to th this, this to me. And yeah, I've captured something that I think is quite, quite special. And then the other thing is views and views into the distance and people being able to see in into the distance is important. Um, I read somewhere, and I can't remember where, I can't find it, that the, the um, but I'm sure there's loads of research on this, that, that you know, when we didn't have the modern world and we go back to, you know, cavemen, then, then they, will, they want to be able to see a, lo a long way. They, you know, that was important to them to be able to see you know, what was coming and, and if they couldn't see a long way then perhaps that, that indicated danger. And again if you look at um, photos that I've got that where I can see a long way, so maybe something like this, then you know, that's, that's, that's a pleasing image. I can see all the way into the distance. It's really, really clear. Now, obviously the lilac colours in this are beautiful as well and this is quite a calming image, but I think part of it is calming because of the distance that you can see, the clarity that you can see these mountains with. Whereas something like that image that I showed just before of sky, um, where you know you couldn't see all the way into the distance, there's more fear there, there's more um, a, a feeling of unknown and, and that is important to think about when you're actually taking these photos. So the last thing that I think evokes emotion is a desire to want to be there and to want to find out more about that location. And, you know, that is certainly as a photographer when I look at images, um, I quite often want to be there because I want to go, <laughs> I say, 
I, I think to myself, I want to go and take that, that, that photograph. But um, the thing is in fiction and music, you know, what we're tending to do is transport somebody to, to a different location and then they can start to, um, you know, set, set the mind racing and, and, and start to imagine themselves being there. And you can do that with photographs as well. So again, uh, I, I think a, a, a good example of that is this, this photo here, you know, I, th I think people look at this photo and quite often I get comments that, that, that people say, oh, that must have been amazing being there. Because you, you can tell it's a still night. You can see the reflections on the lake of the silhouettes of the trees. Um, and it, you, 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 know, you, you imagine yourself being there. And, you, know, you can even feel that it's probably quite a warm evening, even though I don't tell you about that because it's got that sort of um, you know, really warm summer evening feel to it. And I think trying to think about that when you take your shot and try and visualize that, you know, you know, you look at through your camera and maybe just think if somebody just looks at this scene, would they want to be there here? Would, you know, is that, it, could you imagine somebody thinking, God, I really want to be there. Now that's not going to be the same in everything. Maybe they might imagine what it might be like to be there, even though it's really horrible conditions and raining and windy. But I think being able to transport themselves there makes a big difference. So I think you've got to think about that with, with, with photography. The other thing I just want to say before I go is, 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 is about editing. And I feel that editing is so important. I'm not going to talk about that in a lot of detail in this video. I did a, video, um, a tutorial here on visualizing um, the image before you take it and how you then go on to edit it and it's something that I've talked about before I do all the time I think it's massively important you know all the way back down to Ansel Adams he um, thought editing was a critical part of taking a photograph and you know you need to know how you're going to edit that photo as you're taking it I feel to be able to to be able to produce that bit of art that's maybe going to evoke some some sort of emotion um, so really think about that, really think about how you can improve your editing skills. Go and take a look at that video. I've also done other videos on, on my channel about that. But even if it's just understanding a few more tools in Lightroom that are going to help you portray what you visualized when you took that shot, then it definitely will make a difference. Okay, I just want to say thanks to the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. Um, they have been really helpful in my journey as a, an artist and a landscape photographer in helping me create photos that, that really try and evoke emotion in people. It's something obviously I'm massively passionate about. If you want to go and take a trial of Squarespace then you can go to www.squarespace.com and if you're ready to take that a little bit further then you can get 10% off with the offer code Nigel or you can just type in Nigel at checkout. Okay so before I finish let's just talk about the survey that I did with and without titles. So I'm going to put it up at the end so you can have a look at it and you can see the two different results. I put the image and I put the two different survey results. Um, but what was really surprising to me is that there wasn't a huge amount of difference when I put a title on it. Now, maybe my titles aren't powerful enough and the, and the titles aren't changing somebody's opinion, but I was sure that the ones with titles would show a different emotional res response to the ones without titles. So take a look at them. You can see the titles in the photos. You can see the photo and you can see the polls and make your own conclusion. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching today. I, this has been a real special video to make. I really enjoyed it. And I think um, you're not gonna take a photo every day that's gonna evoke really strong emotions, but if you can get two or three of those a year that are really special, then that's what 
really makes it brilliant about being a landscape photographer. So enjoy it, go out and just massively enjoy the environment that we live in because it's fantastic. I'm going to go and walk pebbles now. Take care, bye. Oh